Hello, my friends, and welcome to a little bonus episode of the Greenlight Weekend Podcast. As always, I am your host, Brian Nystrom. Um, not going to do a sponsor read, just going to say that this is a YouTube-only bonus episode. We're having a little technical difficulties on my side. I've uh, been a little busy lately, but we did what we could. Um, I zoomed in with David Oakley. I fucking love Dave. We haven't talked in a while, and he's been wanting to get on. So uh, we had Dave on. We didn't do a great job of doing an introduction in the actual Zoom, so I figured I'd just do a little something-something so everybody knew what was going on. But yeah, just a YouTube bonus episode um, coming out in the middle of the week. I hope you enjoy it. I just wanted to talk to my boy Dave. Uh, we still have an in-person guest on Friday. Fun little episode there with Billy Cheese. Andrew Mitchell, what? Uh, yeah, that was fun, but that comes out Friday. So for now, just enjoy me and my boy David Oakley catching up. This one doesn't even have a number. This is just a bonus YouTube-only Zoom episode with my boy David Oakley. Yeah. Give me some of that, give me some of that. What it is you really bring it to the table, Jack? Get it chopping like a little lumberjack. Let the homie bring it back when I write a little rap, huh? What you think about that? Yeah. I know you ain't thinking the swag. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to sound too cocky. I'm just feeling ah, 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 yep, yep, yeah, all right. 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 Ah, 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 yep, I answered like seven different questions you didn't just ask, but uh, uh, yeah, everything's good. <laughs> Dude, your internet seems tight as fuck. This is like the clearest I've seen it. It is, man. I mean, I got a router in there, like I got a router 10 feet away, and that's actually my office. I've been like kind of working on that. Uh, it's kind of like the last room to finish off here, but um, yeah, I got good internet in there, and so it kind of spreads out to the living room it doesn't go all the way to my bedroom which is on the other side of the apartment for some reason like i have a huh. yeah 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 for some reason it's, it's not stretching all across the apartment which i don't understand but in the living room it's solid yeah i wonder if that's why mine sucks my router is all the way across the house that might be it to be honest because i uh you know i had like a, just a smart tv in my bedroom it connected to the Wi-Fi. It said everything was working, but then I'd put on like Amazon or Netflix or something, and it would just cut out within seconds. So I, uh, yeah, I ended up just getting a box that I plugged into the wall over there, and that that seemed to help. But yeah, across a fucking apartment or a house seems to be a big jump for Wi-Fi. Yeah, how big is your apartment? Um, I think I think. It's either 1,400 or 1,200 square feet. I think it's 1,200. I'm too dumb to even understand what that means. Um, I mean, I can show you kind of like... Oh, Dave's famous oh, walkabouts. Here. Yeah, I'm doing it, you asked. All right, so here's our like front door, nook area, bathroom. There's like the living room. I see you see the thing. Damn. Yeah, is this the biggest place you've ever lived as a grown up? Uh, no, because uh, Kat and I lived in the townhouse when we were in Florida, like, a long time ago. But, I mean, in Durango, there was nothing even that could touch this. And, I mean, it's partially because Kat works for the company that we live in the complex uh, with, so we get a 20% discount. But, I mean, everything included, we're still paying less than we did for, like, our bills at that minor house. You know, that shotgun house we lived in, in off 6th Ave, like... Off uh, Sixth Street, we uh, were paying less than that, and it's like a 
nice place instead of that that place was a shithole you know yeah it was just hard to hang out with you at your house man there just wasn't a lot of room there was you know no I mean? room yeah i know i got in one couch that i have here in my living room now i have like five more seats available for people you know which is nice and the office is going to double as a guest bedroom which is going to be for comics to come and stay right. and, or just i mean or friends but i mean i prefer comics you know I like hanging out with them more well i'm sure the majority of your friends are probably going to be comics i mean if you're just if all the time you spend going out is to do comedy those are just going to be the people you meet and then yeah and i don't know your life like what you do when you go out but it sounds like comedy usually yeah dude i've been doing a lot like last week i uh i got up five times in four Damn. nights last week yeah and that was that was pretty fun uh one of them was at uh uh this base is the urban room it was just me and this one other white kid the other white kid went up before me and he told a story about how he used to be on crack and then i went up there and my jokes were just bombing but the, like the in between like i thought about what you've said to me before after this because like the in between i just had the quickest like retorts and it was like i bombed and i killed in the same set i got video of it i just haven't watched it yet but I I've seen like, you do that so many times. Like your material is just falling flat, but the like the wittiness of like s being comfortable sitting in the bomb and just like fuck me, like that always uh, gets the reaction. It's so weird. I mean, like it just seems so simple. Like why can't why wouldn't everybody do that? But I really do. I just like wow. I just I just basically demean myself as soon as I say something that bombs because I literally feel that way because I feel like God. Why did I think that was funny or whatever? As you should, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they work, and then sometimes they don't. You know, so it's so when it does when it when it's been working, and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Like this past Friday, like it's just I'm like ah fuck. I guess I got the wrong idea from the other shows. <laughs> yeah. So did you get a pretty much do like five different rooms? Oh yeah, there or, were. Five I mean, different five rooms. different like audiences you know what i mean like oh, not a lot of crossover uh, oh 100 percent. i mean uh uh one like like so on mondays like tonight um there's one at this bar jimmy max which is actually right next door to the restaurant where cat and i met at where we work together um matter of fact a couple weeks ago i did a mic there and afterwards this like he's an older black dude he was like yo david i looked up i was like what is up, Byron? I haven't seen you in 10 years, but he was like a server with us when we weren't there a long time ago. Um, so that was kind of cool. But like, that's like, that place really sucks. Like it is like worse than Starlight to do comedy at. Like, and the thing is that show starts at 7.30. There's an awesome mic 10 minutes away that starts at nine on Monday. So a lot of people kind of stopped going to the first one. And I've been staying going to the first one, like just to practice, even if I'm only talking to four or five people, sometimes I can tell if something I'm working on is like worth, you know, like yeah. exploring further because they'll laugh. I mean, they won't laugh if it's not funny, but if all four of those people fucking laugh, I'm like, fuck yeah, I got something to take to the next, you know, mic or whatever. Um, so we go there and then Tuesday night's a spot downtown Atlanta. Wednesday, I don't usually have a, a room I go to yet. I'm still meeting people and finding out more about more mics. Um, Thursday, there's a spot a mile down from my house and a spot um, about 10 minutes away after that. And then Fridays, like, yeah. Like, so completely different rooms, completely different audiences. And uh, yeah, it's wild, man. Nice. Well, you look good, man. Interesting. Thanks, man. Maybe Appreciate you're just in it. the sun, but you look, your skin looks healthy. You, you're high energy. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, I've really, I, cause I, I watch your fucking podcast. I listen to it and I hear you say, I don't, I, <laughs> you, I'm worried about him moving into his own spot. I think he was just walking at his mom's house to get out the house. And yeah, that's kind of true. 
But yeah. uh, been there, was... dude. I lived with my great grandmother. I, yeah. I never took more uh, fucking yeah. walks in my life. <laughs> But I mean, I uh, yeah, but like today, like I actually did go to the gym, like I texted you earlier, but for some reason my key, like the, my key wasn't unlocking the door. I, I don't know if they changed the locks or if it was just shut down for maintenance, which happens sometimes, but instead I just went on a jog, like a 20, 30 minute jog around the streets and shit. So um, just, and like, you know, long walks and shit, just trying to stay like keeping the, exercise active. going yeah just stay active man like the less sitting on your ass the better i mean that's just bad for you all around mentally and physically especially yeah for sure i mean i i don't get to sit on my ass that often because i stand all day in the goddamn kitchen and yeah you know what i mean i got shit to do but when i mm -hmm. do like i just worked for the last six days in a row because we got a bunch of employees out of town so everybody's kind of oh, picking up the slack yeah and, dude when I, like, last night was the first night I could stay up late and, like, you know, not have to yeah. worry about it. So I got fucked up. Kelly's out of town. I was just oh, a piece nice. of shit by myself. <laughs> just fucking, I watched the new Justice League, which is four hours long, but it is I way heard. better than the other movie. Is way it better. worth it? I heard it was a waste of time, but it's I've also so heard much it was more great. entertaining. But I'm a nerd. Like, I like that yeah. shit. I wanted yeah. it to be good, you know? Yeah, I'm not super into the, like, I mean, like, I, I like them, like, the ones I've seen I like, but, like, I don't know the order of any of them, I've never seen a Thor, I've never seen, like, uh, well, I've seen, like, Black Panther, I've seen, like, a bunch of them, but, like, I, I don't know, they, they, like, uh, this new one, there's no way in hell I will ever watch that, like, four hours, like, that puts me off off the bat, like, I'm not, it's not that I'm not interested, like, I would sit down and watch it if I knew it was two hours, but knowing it's two two-hour movies, I'm like, nah. No, I feel you. And I me. think the main reason I actually did it is because every day this week when I got off, I didn't have a lot of time. So I've just been consuming, like, YouTube. And, right. You know, like, comedy and shit like that. And then yeah. last night I got home. I tried to play video games, but I was like, fuck this. And uh -huh. I saw that, and I was like, looked at the time. I was like, I ain't got shit to do. Dude, so I just cracked a beer, hit play, and fucking sat back yeah. and took the ride, man. No, I, I actually... I can I understand that and that sounds really nice actually especially like if Cat was out of town or something right. that would be that would be the time where I sit down and like put on a 4 hour movie you know that just came out like I even if it was uh, what was it called uh, uh Justice League Oh Justice League yeah you know what it's called yeah yeah like I would I would I would watch that probably if I was just chilling by myself I got bowls to pack. I got some fucking seltzers because I'm still drinking the seltzers. Yeah, you are. Like, I, I would do that, dude. dude. Yeah, and it was just a special circumstance. I still haven't finished right. The Irishman because who has the goddamn time? Oh, you know what man. I mean? It's I watched the first half, and yeah. then I just never pushed play on it again. It's really good, dude. I love how it ends. Well, I'm telling you, but Batman you're never gonna watch pretty it. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, who plays Batman in this one? Uh, Ben Affleck. Is that who's been playing him for the past few years? Yeah. Jesus. See, I don't know shit about. Wait, isn't doing... Batman? Isn't Batman DC though? Wait. Yeah, Justice League? it is. Yeah, Justice League's DC. It's like Batman, right. Wonder Woman, Superman, The Flash, Aquaman. Like. Right. Right. And the and Justice then... League was a cartoon when I was a kid, and I loved that shit. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. They had the Wonder Twins who could touch and like <laughs> form into something. Did you like the Power Rangers too? Oh fuck yeah, dude! Yeah, that, that was, was my shit. I loved it. Every time I went to my grandparents, I watched Power Rangers. It was like a yeah, thing. Power Rangers are great. But man, man, I went fucking weeks the past like out of the past month or so without weed, and fuck, I got irritable, man. Yeah, it was just yeah. I mean, it, this is not a bit. I'm just saying, like, I finally got weed and I feel normal again, dude. I just oh. saw my eyes in the computer is what it is, and that reminded me that I'm stoned. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's not, it, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not Colorado weed. Yeah. But it's still, it's, be, it's better than well, you'd expect. I think it's better than you'd expect. I mean, it's not garbage by any means. Yeah, but I am a picky bitch. Like, yeah, but I mean, if you were here and you didn't want to travel with it, I don't think you'd be disappointed to smoke whatever I got. You know? Right. 
I did uh, get yeah. disappointed in Phoenix, and they were like, "This is medical." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, what? really? Oh, yeah. Well, then you probably will be disappointed in fuck yeah." <laughs> But it, it just I mean, it I, tasted like shit, dog. And it might have oh, been the cheap this, medical, you know. They were willing to share it yeah. with somebody they didn't really know. So that's true, and they could have been lying too. Yeah, like it, been they the could have just been had. saying that. Yeah, there's probably swag, and they're like, "Yeah, this is medical. It's yeah. not making Arizona look good." I don't think anybody's trying to make Arizona look good. You know, I don't think. Yeah, they really can't. My mom. It tries to make oh. Arizona look good because she wants me to move there. And right now, dude, during <laughs> spring training, she went to a, a spring training game the other day. And she, yeah. Oh, awesome, dude. Like, yeah, I she said it was a of, fucking blast. Yeah, spring training gra- games are great. I, I'm i surprised to hear you even talking about them. I, I, didn't, I don't expect you to want to go to one, well, but you should. I like I like sports live, but on TV. You baseball? The, yeah, I've been, I've been doing MLB game. Okay, cool. When I was a kid, but just the experience, like I like an event. Who doesn't? You know what I mean? Like I hear you, yeah. And then spring training games are great too because like you know, like they play the game before the game, they all the players are just right there on the sidelines. If you just like there's usually a spot where there's a bunch of people gathered up and anybody can just walk up to it. And then all the players come by, they like give you autographs on baseballs or jerseys or tickets or whatever. And it's just really relaxed. And then like you get these sick autographs and then you go in and, you know, just watch the game. And like, cause it's like spring training. It's not super serious and it's just kind of a good time. Good vibes. And like, yeah, I recommend anybody going to a spring training game if they can. Yeah. I bet the whole meeting the players situation is different right now. Because last oh. year they didn't even allow fans, but my yeah, mom said she had a great right. time. She said with COVID, she thought it was probably even more fun because they basically had like their own bathroom that was all like clean and empty. Like she said, oh, getting wow. a beer took 30 seconds. Like she was just, well, that's get food the without a line. Yeah. Yeah. It's way better That's, than pissing in a trough full of men. Like I, I know. I did that as like a nine-year-old boy. And I was just like, you <laughs> know, dick height. Like there's yeah. just dicks out right next to you. My dad's like, fucking, you said you had to go. Let's go. Yeah, I remember those days, dude. <laughs> just pissing in a urinal as an eight-year-old was so intimidating sometimes. A trough, too. Like it's one yeah. thing if I know, you had a little what... divider and you could like pretend yeah. that you're not. I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Peeing by You're, a grown man with like a heavy flow. It's like splashing at you and shit. Oh, yeah. For sure, dude. It's like, uh, I'm pretty sure Brave, the old Brave Stadium, like when I first moved here, which was like mid 96. So, um, oh, man, it's called Fulton County Stadium. I'm pretty sure they had like that, the troughs. I don't know if the newer stadium, because there was a stadium in between when I moved here in 96, they tore down. Fulton County Stadium, which is the stadium I was it was only around for a little bit when I was here. And then it was Turner Stadium. And now recently, just about, I mean, a few miles down the road from where I'm at, about a 10-minute drive is the brand new uh, Brave Stadium, which I haven't even been to yet, which is pretty right. exciting that it's so close because it's always been on the south side of Atlanta. And now it's on the north side, which is dope. Yeah, stadiums are like historically in the shitty part of town, right? I mean, it seems like that, Is it dude? just because the land is cheap, probably, for that big of a chunk of you land? You know, I probably, dude. You know, because, I mean, honestly, like, where they put the new one, I used to buy all sorts of dope off of that street. Mm-hmm. And, but, like, at the same time, like, if you were to get, I worked at, for, at the same time, I worked at a freaking fancy-ass seafood restaurant about a mile away from the stadium that was, like, nice i saw all sorts of celebrities in there and and it was like fancy and expensive there and there and then also there's like some apartments there man they're like 16 1700 bucks a month for a one bedroom so like but a mile it, away but but yeah but exactly i guess that's what it is like just the proximity to the ghetto is very real but uh it's also so close to like uh like inner city that it which is going up in real estate value tremendously right. that yeah that, that it can be expensive too it's weird I, think, I i hear that about a lot of cities though that you know the ghetto has kind of a line 
and right on the other side of that line there's like nice yeah. properties and like <laughs> two neighborhoods over it's like could be balling out of control yeah that's true i mean it's very true in atlanta too but i think in the case of like the baseball stadium taking over its current spot i think that's more of a, a gentrification issue i don't think they're just it's i don't think it's not just like a nice area that like borders the ghetto it's it it was pretty much ghetto and they just kind of took over and made it nice who's so, that the whites the whites yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely yeah. the evil whites <laughs> and the atlanta braves and which Atlanta's. which is culturally inappropriate if you ask my native brothers but no, i'm just kidding eh, i've been Nobody's seeing ever. josh fournier a lot i don't think he gives a fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude he, he, I, he's posted some videos he's killing it dude he's seriously one of my favorite comedians that i know man me too, and I've been getting to see him every week. And that's cool. Him. Yeah, he's coming up there for both those mics on Tuesday. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up, man. Dude, he signed up in the middle of the ranch mic, like in the middle of the set list. Yeah, and I was, I saw that it was tones behind him, but I was just like, okay, this is gonna be a shit show. Fucking Fournier did like five and a half minutes crushed change the energy in the room <laughs> <laughs> fucking crushed and tones and tones is shit like, for four minutes yo i'm gonna be a real estate agent exactly yeah <laughs> dude but right before that tones did a set at the starlight it was the most honest i've ever seen him he was just talking about his life and it was awesome was and it funny great it was great yeah yeah, yeah fucking goes to rancho sees 48 crush and of course grabs that Loot. mic and goes been having a rough week found out i lost my identity <laughs> 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 motherfucker you did so good over there and i even told him i was like more of this dude more of this this is yeah. what people want and then yeah. he went up there at the ranch and i saw the set start and i was like all right i'm gonna go take a piss yeah. <laughs> but he That's got funny. him at the end he got him at he the did? end yep at the ranch yep he didn't completely okay. shit he he went off on a really high note i was proud of him all right good i am proud of him too because i know that feeling like the best show i had at um the friday night show that i was telling you about it's like an urban room it's at the punchline marietta the best show i had there um fuck what was i say? gonna say like uh I don't know. I went in, I don't know, and I just had everything planned. Again, things didn't go, so I improvised kind of, you know, and uh, fuck, I completely lost my train of thought trying to remember the name of that place. But it has, something to, do, it has something to do with Tones. Well, no, I, yeah. Fuck. Well, I, I think it has something to do with, like, what you were saying, like, to, to, like telling Tones, like, Dude, that shit you did at Starlight when you were just being yourself and honest, like that's that's what people want to see, you know? And I was doing this uh, writing workshop with this dude earlier this week, and he was like, I challenge you to like go to a mic and have no fucking clue what you're going to say and just go up there because it forces you to be in the moment. It forces you to be honest and real. And, um, and I won't do that. Like, I'm not doing that yet, especially not around here. But, like, I'm going up with just kind of, like, loose notes. And then I'm kind of just filling in the blanks. Or maybe that's what I was going to say. It's just reference that show that I did before where I, all my actual jokes bombed. But it was the improv in the middle that actually worked out. And it was just me being myself and embarrassed and honest. Honest in the situation, yeah. Max and so, the like, best about it. That's he starts what breaking down. Yeah. He's like, I'm just really uncomfortable right now. And everybody else feels that. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. When he says what everybody else is thinking, they laugh. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. And, and so I think that's what Tones did the first show. And then, it's oh, the Starlight. Fuck it. I know what I was. I knew I was referencing that place. Um, the punchline was because it was a few. It was like like a month or two ago. I watched the head the host go up and just crush it for 10 minutes and then this other dude who's kind of on my level he's a like few years in he's from uh, massachusetts but he's doing comedy down here and uh 
he went up and he crushed it. And I was looking at my jokes, waiting to go on, like, this is not going to work in this room at all. Yeah. And I went up and all five minutes crushed. Like, I got it on audio. So I'm happy about it. But, like, I, like, it was the best I ever did in that room. And because, like, I was doubting myself based on the performers before me. But, like, that's the key is, like, you just got to, like, really trust yourself and really not doubt yourself to, you know. And try to ride the energy that exists. Like, yes, yes, yes. That's what I tried to do. Absolutely. And it, and it worked because the host was so energetic. He's one of the funniest fucking people I've seen live. And I've got to uh, see him a bunch around here. His name is Weight Ball. Weight Ball? Yeah, Weight Ball. Like W-E-I-G-H-T Ball. Weight Ball. He's like this huge black dude. But he is one of the funniest motherfuckers, dude. Like, so quick in the moment. He's only been doing it for like seven years. But when you watch him, it's like you'd think he'd been doing it longer. And if he was fat as a kid, he probably had to develop kind of a personality. You know what I mean? Like, oh, think I'm about sure, like Ralphie yeah. May, Joey Diaz, like uh-huh. all these people that were always deflecting feeling bad or, you know, right. people trying to make him feel bad. I imagine so. Yeah. He probably used it as a defense mechanism as a young kid. And man, he figured out how to like hone that shit too, man. Yeah, when I was a kid, I had big ears, buck teeth, a bull haircut, and just the biggest Adam's apple you ever saw on a little kid, dude. <laughs> so, like, I had to be witty, and I was scrawny, you know? I got beat up, like, a bunch. I got jokes about it now, but... Yeah. Just fucking... It had to be sharp. It was yeah. the only way I could make people like me. Or if you snap back at a teacher and get the whole room to laugh, you're like, oh, damn. Yeah. But he's nice I to wait. you after that. I wish I had that. I was always too quiet, man. Too shy. It so might have been your but nobody fucked, too. Nobody fucked with me, so I never really had to use that as a defense mechanism. But, I mean, I was, like, like not part of any popular group. And I, all, most of my friends were just regular kids. But also the bullies and shit, they didn't fuck with me either. So I didn't fuck with the popular kids. I didn't fuck with the bullies, which I guess they're usually the same thing. But they didn't fuck with me. Like, they, I was just, like, the nice kid, you know? Like, in eighth grade, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing now, but in eighth grade, I won, I, uh, I was voted uh, most friendliest Aww. in my eighth grade class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's adorable. But, uh, but, yeah, but, like, uh, but I was never, I never felt like part of like a popular group, but also I never got fucked with by bullies. So you probably had a I, way bigger uh, population going to your school than I did too. Oh, like, well, everybody interacted at my schools. You see, know what yeah, I mean? You cross paths not. with every single person. Oh yeah, dude. I'd go days without seeing co- like students of mine in my same grade. I mean, right. like, yeah, yeah. I, I went to a bit, two big high schools actually really big around here metal detectors or no uh not when i was there now do you think they do now i bet you they do now one of them is more ghetto than the other drug dogs and metal detectors i i would imagine i could see drug dogs and metal detectors at my first high school it's called sprayberry high school i could see them being there but at uh kale high school where i ended up graduating not too white I don't yeah. think so. Too too rich and wealthy of an area. The, the fucking white kids' parents would put an uproar. Isn't that the fucked that. up part? The yeah. the places with the actual resources to do something don't need it. They do need it, but the parents would make a stink about it and be like, "Oh, because their kid was inconvenienced." You? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How dare you? That's adorable. Uh, fucking, oh, dude. Yeah, there's some real sluts around here. My parents couldn't care less about anything than me being inconvenienced. Like, but <laughs> yeah, I'm just like oh, go same. to school. My, yeah. yeah, mine either, dude. My parents would take up the teacher's side on any story. Always. Yeah. Like, yeah, you must they, have been doing they, something. Yes, exactly. Like they, they don't. They, they, like, I guess we just come from that generation where parents don't listen to their kids, and or if they do listen, they don't trust or believe their kids. I you also know, think we came from that generation where parents were almost always young. You know, people had kids at 
18 to 21 age range. How, how old were your parents? Like 19, 20. Really? See, mine were 30 and 27 or 28. Uh, My mom so was a little older. One. My mom was 30. She, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit older. Yeah, I think Maybe my parents were extremely overwhelmed. And for me to be in school was a giant weight off their shoulders as far as responsibility. And they could focus on actually, you know, pursuing their careers and whatnot. Like my dad was going to right. medical or nursing school when I was a little kid because he got uh -huh. tired of being oil filled trash and driving fucking water trucks and shit. <laughs> yeah, sure. And yeah, I think they're just super busy. So when I was at school, they were That's like, really? I had to leave to work. Shit. Say that again? Uh, I think they were just so busy that when I got in trouble at school, they'd be like, I can't believe I had to fucking leave work. Oh, like, that's how yeah. we put food on the table and you can't behave yourself for fucking eight hours. Like, do whatever they say. Yeah. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Learn. <laughs> Dude, rightfully so. They're out there fucking busting ass. Like, I mean, I get it. Like, we're, they're not asking much of us, but, you know, we all had to, like, go and figure shit out. Like, learning who I, we are where we fit in the world like i'm completely different now than when i was a kid go figure but some people aren't you know like i've met people that act just as childish at 35 as they did at fucking 14 and i just i don't understand it personally the harrington like, oh, yeah, brothers you, what's that the harrington brothers <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> when you see big child i just think of those two goofy fucks <laughs> You're every time, wrong. every day You're I see wrong. Caleb on a scooter. <laughs> He's got a scooter now. Probably has, has no license. Yes. Shout out, Caleb. Shout out to half a Durango. <laughs> yeah. Every time I meet uh, an adult that doesn't have a car, I'm like, how? They're like, you don't really need it in Durango. And then Bull bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah. an excuse. They fucking sold their car when they got the DUI to pay off their fines. Is what they did. I don't need a car. I can walk everywhere. I can take the trolley. Yeah, right. You had a fucking bills. Yeah, I was eleven thousand dollars in debt after I got arrested, and I was like, "Yeah, I need a car. Fuck, I'll fucking work." And but I didn't get a DUI. I was still able to legally drive. That that's a fact. That helps a lot. Yeah, that does help. If you're like, <laughs> I can't drive for a year, you're like, "Fuck it, I'll buy a new piece of shit car in a year." No kidding. Yeah. And that you can do that during. I mean, unless you're trying to go to the mountain, you can't really buy a piece of shit or do you know anything that? that's not downtown. I'm so sick of people yeah. asking me for rides. Like, no, motherfucker. Well, you don't live in a convenient spot to give people rides, so right. I would, if, I would, yeah, I'd have no problem if I was you telling people to fuck off. No. Yeah, when I, I get I a podcast guest, if they don't have a car, guess what? <laughs> Sucks to be you, because. Yeah. I'm not gonna go pick your ass up and then take you home dude or what you could do is fucking just pause if it's convenient pick them up and let, let them uber home you know like but be like I'm not doing both you know like that's still more than kind of you to pick them up yeah but I also am a very busy person and yeah you are like you get to somebody's house and they're like five minutes you're like motherfucker I text oh, you when I left my no. house <laughs> Hell no, that's that's unacceptable right there, dude. Yeah, I if do I'm have picking Keith. you up. If what's that? I do have Keith, so Keith gives people rides sometimes. Oh yeah, how's Keith doing? Great man, he's coming on tonight with Mario. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh yeah, it's only fucking three twenty-three there. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I, I miss I miss all my friends there, man. But and most of the time, it's discouraging doing comedy out here. But I just I, I can't help but feel like at least I'm getting somewhere. I am starting to feel that way at least. Fuck yeah, dude! I'm I'm super happy for you. I I feel like every time I go on stage, I'm cold, except for that two a night. You know, I get to hit right. the ranch and I'm a little warmed up. And I usually just yeah. throw some bullshit at Starlight. Just all. All new premises, <laughs> didn't even think them out. Well, that's what I loved about Starlight. It was a perfect, like, premise practice area, dude. Like, it was perfect for that, man. Yeah, but and... the bad part is a lot of the times you're getting laughs from only comics, and they're laughing because they're sick-minded fucks. And then you yeah. try it in front of, like, normal people, and it's just silence. Because the comics already heard the joke. They're not going to laugh again. Right, yeah. Yeah, dude, and imagine that, but with, like, 
20 other comics in the room that come to a lot of mics like it, it but sometimes they laugh and you just know it's because you actually did do good you actually right. said something funny but like yeah most of the time it's it's uh I don't know. If, I don't know if daunting is the word, but it's like, I guess maybe a little intimidating. I really don't care enough to make it to say intimidating, but like, I, I just, I don't know, man. It's just I haven't, there, I've only done like a couple of rooms that there was actually a crowd there to watch comedy, and because most of the time it's just other comics watching you, and like five or six other people in the crowd max. And uh, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's rough, like you said. And it's they're not even there to see comedy. They were just alone at the oh. bar and saw a mic set up. They're like, "Shit, I'll yeah. take a seat." <laughs> yeah, that's the ranch. I feel like there's uh, four people there that care, and one of them's my yeah. girlfriend. Everybody else is just bored. Yeah, dude, and they're not, not hardly listening. Either they're gonna go up, so they're in their head thinking about what they're gonna say, or they just don't give a fuck. Which is 90% of the time, it's just the latter. They just don't really care. You know, like, like people worry about repeating themselves in Durango. Like, come to Atlanta, man. Nobody's going to hear you for at least the first three months, no matter what you say. You know, Perfect. like, yeah, I mean, it, it, but it, it kind of is, because it really gives you time to work on that, hone, hone certain shit. Just get comfortable in the environment. Because I felt like I was at the point where I couldn't co go at a certain like at certain mics with certain material because I felt like I had said it too much, and I I haven't like I've come to realize just by watching all, all these other local comics like I hear so, like um like there's several comics that every single time whether they switch up their set or not they'll say at least one or two jokes that I've heard every single time i've seen them perform which at this point is you know a couple dozen yeah just from going to the mics and they'll still say at least one joke that's the same every time and i i just i try not to do that because i want to like i don't know i want to work on new shit and but that's the hardest thing like that's the scariest thing like tonight i'm gonna work on a, a new bit that i've been writing but i haven't performed it yet and i'm doing it out of pretty decent mic so like it's it, it's yeah, hard but one new bit right yeah but i'm gonna make five minutes out of it oh no, i'm gonna do, i'm gonna do five new minutes like oh. yeah like yeah like i mean i was thinking about because it, it, uh, because i could do easily i could like close with the Tino's bit which is about a minute and a half i could close with that and it will, I, and it correlates specifically to something I talk about in the in the first like two and a half, three minutes. Drugs. Um, yeah, kind of. Just like I talk about how uh, I, I I was pissed off because I couldn't get weed for several weeks. Then I started working at a restaurant, and I was like, all right, now I'll be able to get some bud. And I asked a chick for like where I could find weed, and she actually said this to me. She said, Yeah, I can get you some bud. You just gotta work here for like a month or two so everybody knows you're not a cop. <laughs> and that's like the premise. It's a good and, uh, yeah. Right, premise. And, that's a good starting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna say uh something like I guess I kinda get it because I kinda look like a cop. And but like I look like a cop that would steal coke from the evidence room not a cop that would bust someone for an eighth so i really don't understand why she said that to me and then just i got other other parts that i'm going to work on i also think when you say i realize i look like a cop there's a lot of shots at your physical appearance that you could take okay like most what? cops what aren't i just feel like i see a lot of fat cops <laughs> like and i'm not yeah. saying you're super fat but no i still got, i know. still got a little bit of a belly though and i was actually already thinking of that angle like how can I do that? Because you're shitting like... on yourself. And, but yeah, you can I know, be like chubby, pasty with bad facial hair or something. Just three things off the top. I, I was <laughs> <laughs> I got good face. I got good facial hair for one. I ain't pasty no more because yeah, I'm pasty. But, it's the light. It's the light. Yeah, whatever you say, dude. I'm Polish. You look pretty white, white dog. It's just Polish. You look white. racist white. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, dude. 
I look like I would shoot someone that didn't deserve it, and I'm not that. But like, or you look like you would shoot someone because you're jealous of their tan. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, all right, that's pretty funny. I'm gonna have to say that, dude. Yeah, it's we like, should do I, this dog workshop. I, I've been saying I that. I just haven't had time, bro. I just I, I really had time. want to do it because, like, I there's so many jokes I want to go through with you. Because I'm like, I told Cat, I was like, you know, I love running my jokes by you and stuff, but like, I need other. Co- that's why, like, I um this dude that I met on Displaced Comedians, I did his open mic, Zoom open mic. And he's funny, and um, he's been doing it for, like, 12 years. He was, like, 10 bucks an hour for, like, you know, writing workshops. I was like, fuck it. I'll give it a shot for an hour. And, like, I got, I got a few things out of it. Like, actually, like, I was going over the whole – the girl told me she needs to make sure I'm not a cop first bit. And he was like, well, you do kind of look like a cop. And so that's where I got that from. And I, I have other bits, like parts of that, that I go into. <clears throat> but anyway, like it really helped a lot, just like talking about it. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be good for, I mean, me, you, me, me or you, or, or me and you, or uh, me, you and Max. I mean, whatever. For sure. Like, it really will only help us because you just helped me punch up my joke, even though I forgot it. Look like you would shoot somebody because you're jealous of their tan. <laughs> but yeah, and even this, yeah. dude, this 20 minutes a day and having people hold yeah. you accountable has upped my shit considerably. I have a new 10 minutes. Like, I'm not saying it's rock solid. I probably wouldn't do, I would still throw some old bits in there if I was doing a showcase or something. But yeah, but I mean, the 10 minutes is good. I mean, the other parts that you're like uh solid on do you think i mean you could delve into them more and like maybe you know strip like make that a little bit longer oh for sure i'm working on them you know yeah that's because every once in a while you're you get flooded with ideas you know what i mean just new premises and you may not have (laughs) the ability to really write them out at the moment but you get flooded with premises and then sometimes you sit down at your notebook and you're like, I don't have shit. So you just start See, reading those premises and just start fucking, you know, try to fill a page. A lot of time when I'm writing and I, you know, and uh, I, I am doing that. I'm going through premises because I, excuse me, very rarely do I sit down like at like a schedule time. Like I, I, I like started my own, like I, I made my own schedule for today because I was going to be off and I just like Pat has mentioned like probably the best way for me to be come more disciplined is just to give myself a schedule. So like I wrote out a schedule last night for today and um, for the, I've done everything on my schedule. I just did some things out of order and just because I maybe I finished something sooner than I thought, but writing I've written for 30 or 40 minutes today already I blocked out an hour for it. But anyway, like, it's just helping me get more um, disciplined discipline with it. And uh, fuck. God damn it. What was I going with that? Ah, fuck. I forgot what I was saying. That felt like I was going somewhere, and then it felt like it fell flat. It had something to do with what you said, but <laughs> I haven't had weed in weeks, and I just finally got some bud, and I'm like, I'm getting a little too stunned, I think. Sorry. Right. I, I I do something similar. I don't do like a schedule or block out time or anything. I just write a list and I don't get to kick it until the list is done. Okay. Yeah. You know? So it's just like whatever I have to do around the house, write 20 minutes minimum and then, you know, make sure the podcast is ready, all that jazz. And then I can sit down yeah. if I want, you know? Yeah. And, and it does make it easier, like, because there are certain, like, Earlier today, like, one of my uh, time was, like, 9.30, go to the gym, and I was sitting there. I got to I gotta migrate. Um, I was sitting there, and I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm, in, I'm enjoying this, like, this tea in the morning. I, I'm enjoying this podcast. If it wasn't for the fact that I just had written down on a piece of paper, 9.30 a.m. gym, Dude, I probably wouldn't have gone. So like, just the, just just having that, 
for me, maybe it's all psychological. I don't know. I'm just really bad at being self-disciplined. And so I think just writing shit down, it gives me a guideline of, you know, where what I should be doing. Yeah. I mean, the main reason I went to the gym today is I'm trying to make it more of a consistent thing because I've been skipping around with work and stuff. But I just knew I would be better on the podcast with Mario tonight and and this. Like I felt like yeah. dog shit when I got there. When I left, I was like jumping around. It was all loose and fucking felt good. Yeah. Yeah, it it, it does wonders. I mean just uh going on a jog, I mean that I don't think I ran long enough to get what they call runner's high or whatever. But at the same time, I still felt more energized and just I don't know, those endorphins were, were were rushing after a nice jog this morning. It just kind of does something for your uh, energy level. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a complete 180 for me today. I jumped roped for 90 seconds and started getting a cramp. So I stopped. And then, ah. But I did two more 90 second jump ropes and then nice. started doing pull ups. And then I did some like slower stuff where I wasn't getting too winded. And then before I knew it, I was doing squats and deadlifts and shit, and I felt great. Yeah, I don't know how to do all those like weights and shit anymore. I got a, I got a bunch of weights in the weight in the gym. I usually just use a treadmill, but I just don't want to hurt myself. You know, yeah, I feel like start I, light, man. And yeah, you don't have to be doing deadlifts and shit, but just do like lunges and like hold a twenty in each one of your hands and do fucking ten squats and shit. Right, like right. Okay. Yeah, no, I've been thinking about it. I was like, God damn it. I kind of wish I would have taken you up on the training. Go to the gym? Yeah. Yeah, just so I'd have a better idea now that I'm like, I mean, I guess I, mean, I could Google anything. I could YouTube any sort of exercises, and I do. Yeah. But I just kind of wish I had had some guidance at the beginning because now I'm all like terrified of like <laughs> pulling my sciatic nerve again because I'm getting old. Yeah, deadlifts, be weary. Be weary of deadlifts. I'll probably hold off on them. <laughs> but they're great yeah. for you. you should, yeah. Do you have a jump rope? You should try jumping rope, man. Yeah, yeah, I do. You should hit up, like, start at, like, two minutes. Just two minutes jumping rope. Oh. Okay, yeah. But, I've been doing, like, uh, I do jumping jacks a lot. I love jumping jacks. I love jumping jacks for the same reason I love jogging, which is I can feel all my fucking blubber. How do you do jumping it. jacks? Do you do like a number of them or do you do them for time? Yeah, I do a number of them. I usually do them for time. Okay. Because it's just usually... a cardiovascular movement, you know? Okay. I, well, I mean, I do usually, it's two minutes, like, and it's about 100 jumping jacks. That's good. So I would do that before I go on like a jog or something or a walk or whatever and then come back and as i'm cooling off uh, i'll do you know 100 more nice so that's like good that. dude i do three yeah, to five minutes when of jumping rope when i get to the gym and when i leave yeah so just like slow. to warm up and cool down yeah and the second one i'm just like eh, don't be a pussy kind of thing that's yeah the way to motivate yeah myself is to be negative yeah, that's same for me in the jumping jacks. At the end, like it's just to like push myself a little bit more. Not nice. feel like a little bitch. Yeah. That's very similar to jumping rope. I mean It's what I felt like, you know, but I feel like jumping rope probably good too. I mean, yeah, I have one. one it's dope that. for your coordination, like and you can dance better when like when you can start like crossing over your feet and shit, jumping rope, like your dancing is another level. When I was kickboxing, I was never a better dancer in my life. Dude, I will outdance anybody. Okay. Uh, I, don't need, I don't need no jump. Maybe in Durango, boy. Atlanta <laughs> <laughs> <Let it> now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From Atlanta, dude, I can dance. Yeah. How much more time you got, bro? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Word. Well, I was thinking we should do this a little more often. Be our correspondent from Atlanta. Keep us up to date. It. Yeah, I would love that, especially because <laughs> listening to you guys' podcast, like sometimes you say the stupidest shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like this example, Keith. No, 
I am not Jewish because I married a Jewish woman. That's not how that works at all. Uh, I disagree. You guys said that. <laughs> Trust me, if I could claim it, I would. Really? But uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm playing it, but no, that was funny. I was like screaming at my TV like, no, you morons, that's not how it works, dude. <laughs> I don't know. yeah but uh yeah i would love that dude to keep it because it's kind of crazy out here and it's kind of fun like just slowly getting integrated with the comics like i'm finally like facebook friends with like probably five or ten comics in the scene and at first it's just like they wouldn't have nothing to do with me dude yeah. Like, it was, it just, like, every time you hear about it, like, being a real cutthroat, like, I'm seeing that every day. But then, like, you know, people are cool to your face, so you kind of, I take, I take it at face level. I have no reason to doubt these people, and they're cool to me. Right. But then, it's just, but then when, like, I don't know, you see them live, it's just, I don't know. It, yeah. It's just, I think, I think I just got to, like, prove myself, and that's what they want to see. Like make sure I'm not just gonna come for a couple months and like fall off. The more you show your face, like the more respect you get for sure. Right. That's how I feel about Steamworks employees now. I don't even fucking <laughs> talk to you until you've been there for a while. I was the same way when I worked there, dude. Because the second I get to know people, they're just fucking gone, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's this, <laughs> that's exactly right. So that's probably all it is. They probably just like, well, no point in making a new friend if that person's gonna be gone in a day. Yeah, and I get I that. that. I get Phoenix, that, man. Especially because the I felt that in Phoenix, and especially because oh, they yeah. knew I I didn't move there. Like I was just an out of towner, and right. the couple dudes that were nice to me. Also, like I was talking about the festival, and you know, you guys should come do this fucking festival we do in Durango, and. The, the couple dudes that were nice to me is who I smoked weed with, but everybody else was pretty much like, oh, yeah, cool. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. While they're looking at their notebook, you know, not even make eye contact. Just like, cool, man. Cool story, bro. You know how yeah, Elliot they... and Jacob act all the time. <laughs> Those fuckers. I love them. Dude, that show Ooh. we did in Pagosa was fire. Oh, dude, the one video I saw, I guess it was probably uh, Josh. <laughs> So it looked so good. <clears throat> the crowd was there for sure. Dude, we crushed. It, we as a whole fucking crushed. It was awesome. Man, that's awesome, dude. I wish I could have been there. Except the Dead Room Boys didn't record my goddamn set like they told me where they were going to. So I didn't set up my GoPro, but now I got this bad motherfucker. Oh, sick. Yeah, What's that, bro. Cannon? Yeah. Well, since they didn't record your set, you should definitely release the video of Elliot saying the N-word. Uh, I'm going to hold on to that one. Me and Josh were talking about uh, when I should release that. And he said to hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> wait till he's down and then just put him out, dude. I was thinking wait till he's famous and be like, so you need a new feature or <laughs> should we just drop this video on your dude, Facebook page? <laughs> you're going to wait till he's famous, dude. You'll be waiting a long time. Yeah, but. That's the thing about the N word; it never really expires. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, I know, but Elliot will. You're right. Yeah, I'll play it at his funeral. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> Let's get dark. I uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I exercised in Elliot's shirt today. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Do you feel like you finally blogged in Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because there's a white guy in my shirt. Oh, because it makes you super gay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just channeling his uh, exercise capabilities. He jogs a lot, so I was like, no, I don't know. It was just the shirt I had on. <laughs> I get that, but, dude. When I'm nervous, I wear Wu-Tang socks. That's that's just as gay. That's. I don't think that's gay. That's awesome. Yeah, makes it's me gay. happy. And plus, it's not even gay to wear an Elliot Weber shirt because mm. you know he's not he's not gay. It's kind of racist. At all. Yeah, it is, dude. Because he, because he's a racist, and so right. if you wear his shirt and you support him, then clearly you're in support of white supremacy, which Elliot Weber condones strongly. And so I I I think I want to burn that shirt. 
Yeah, but he's not the kind of white supremacist with like the Frankenstein torch, you know, that they had to like make themselves and dip in gasoline. And... <laughs> no, he's the guy with like no. the mosquito torch for sure. Right. Yeah, he just half asses everything. Agreed. Um, except even say, being I, gay. Yeah. Oh well, he never half assed that because he didn't do anything in the ass of the guy. But uh, he's he's just, he's just, no no. Uh, I think he really loves the puss. And he's never even touched a dick, other than his own, maybe. Wow. Sean but he kind of. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> he, he, he. I, I really okay. don't know. All, all, all I know is he's a hateful fuck. He loves um, Steve, uh, Steve Bannon, and uh, you know, I always see him posting on Instagram, Trump, 2024. So, I just know he's a hateful little fag if he is one. Yeah, shout out to our sponsors, Dead Room Comedy. <laughs> Elliot A. Weber, if you're wondering. Yeah. A stands for asshole. No. No way. Aryan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Damn it, that was good. A stands for Aryan. Dude, I'm telling you, writing every day is making me sharper. I'm talking way more shit in the kitchen. I'm dropping yeah. new bits on the kitchen, like, <laughs> like they just came up, you know? Dude, it's fun, dude. That's why I've been, like, fiending for, like, some workshopping, dude. And I, you know, like I said, I can't just go over my jokes with Kat all the time, which, I mean, I do. No, I actually don't anymore. I used to a lot. But it's like, now I need, I need other comics to, like, go over shit with so we can – riff on it and figure shit out yeah you there's really, only a there's only a handful of really funny jewish people yeah <laughs> the handful yeah they're out there but they're uh not durango they're also the ones that get to choose whether the funny people make money so yeah dude, they get the executive praise the jews yep praise jews this, <laughs> I was I was gonna say something else and it didn't make sense. So thought you were gonna say Allah. I was and it made I no thought, sense. I thought about it too. <laughs> it made no sense to phrase Jews. It's like the opposite. Uh, it's like yeah, saying yeah. I love black people, but I'm friends with Elliot Weber. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, he, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> or my name is Elliot Weber and I like black vagina. His girlfriend's wider than you. <laughs> I've never met her. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that makes sense coming from Elliot. Well, his family will accept her. That's the that was the important part. You know what I mean? Well, they have to. It's in the heritage handbook. <laughs> Double H. I don't even know where we're going with this. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go uh piss actually, and then I gotta go uh scoop a wife up. Word, man. Well, you got anything you want to say to the people if there's any still watching this? Thank you for watching this, <laughs> if you are. And, uh, no, that's it. Stay tuned oh. for more updates from Atlanta, I guess. Yeah, our street correspondent in Atlanta. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate yeah. you doing this. Yeah, dude. Thanks for doing it, man. Uh, to close this out, shout out to Dead Room Comedy. Follow Dave at Day O Laughs on Instagram and Twitter. David Oakley on Facebook and um, Dead Room Comedy. Yeah. Love you guys. Shout out Dead Room Comedy. All right. Peace, buddy. All right. Later, player. Take it easy. Yeah.